Today is the day. It is May 1st. Our summer challenge is officially launching. This is a 60 day challenge to help you become fitter, healthier, happier, and just better into summer. It is going to be challenge format. So we're still going to be focusing on really healthy nutrition, training habits, but we're also going to be adding some additional little challenges to help you tighten up and to get to that next level in your fitness. The cutoff was yesterday, but we are expanding three spots for those of you that are going to take that last chance that want to jump in and see some amazing progress and tread alongside me and Kyle and see amazing results over these 60 days. There are over $5,000 of prizes, and this is your absolute last chance to take advantage. So to take advantage of this, go ahead and DM a summer challenge on Instagram to at Colossus Fit, C-O-L-O-S-S-U-S-F-I-T. And if you don't have Instagram, no problem. Go to our website, submit an application, and we will get you in for this special. Now let's go ahead and jump into the episode. What's going on, everyone? Welcome to the Fit, Healthy, and Most of All Happy podcast. I'm your coach and host, Josh, here with... His co-host and co-coach, KG, and I'm in the house. We're bringing that May energy for you today. It is a beautiful day in May. It's awesome to get here, and it's really good. May just fires me up because I feel like we're starting to bridge out of that spring, get towards that summer, and now is where we put in that work to see that result, to have that incredible physique in the summer, to step on that beach feeling better than ever, to be that person at the barbecue that everyone's like, oh my goodness, what are you doing right so this is a great time to get after it and another way to get fired up get after it be inspired is to have some killer quotes so we're going to kick it off with kyle's quote so my quote for this week is most failures are one-time costs most regrets are recurring costs the pain of an action stings longer than the pain of incorrect action this is from james clear the author of atomic habits and i just feel like it was a very well said way to put it and just kind of talk about how kind of when we do fail when we make mistakes it's just you get over it you a lot of times don't even remember it at least me personally i'm just like ah you know it is what it is of course there'll always be that time where you may think about it but the times where you regret doing something for me personally it's the thing that just it bothers me a lot and i'm sure a lot of you can realize that as well but it's just a good reminder when there is something that you want to do when you're maybe taking a potential risk or when you're just doing something out of your comfort zone that realizing that the cost of inaction will always far outweigh the pain of just making making a mistake falling down a little bit and whatnot so that's going to be my quote and it's something that really stood out to me it's something that i'm so passionate about and hopefully it helped you in some way or another today and now we're going to go ahead and jump into our community quote so if you're watching this on youtube you can comment down below one of your favorite quotes a quote that inspired you or something you'd like to share with others so we can go ahead and share it here sometimes we'll also ask on instagram but we just like a quote we got from an amazing member of our community because we love learning from all of y'all just as much as you love learning from us and we have a killer quote for this week and that is do or do not there is no try and this is just incredibly well said this is from luke which is absolutely awesome and this quote is so simple either do or don't do it and there is no try to do it if you're going to do something do it right put the effort in don't just say i want to do it i think i'm going to do it do it or don't do it and this is something i brought up before and something i really confidently believe in is that it's important we set goals that we actually do believe in so sometimes i like overachieving setting big goals that i may fall short of but it's something that i can actionably find a successful path towards whereas some people will have these crazy goals and say yeah i want a six pack but maybe they're at a point where they're 300 pounds they haven't been to the gym they're not doing anything for nutrition and that's a little bit excessive for them and in their mind they think i'll try and i'll fail it's no big deal but instead if you say no i'm going to do this i'm going to take this action i'm going to lose that first 50 then that can snowball into more success and it's really easy when you just say i'm going to do what i need to do not do what i don't need to do and oftentimes a lot of the things a lot of a transformation is actually doing less of the things you shouldn't be doing so actually waking up on time not sleeping in not watching tv late into the night getting to the gym not skipping workouts uh not eating a ton of extra dessert not having a bunch of extra drinks and ex bunch of extra coke cans like things like that oftentimes it's taking things out as much as it's putting in and for that reason i think this is an amazing quote anything you want to add there kyle no it's just it's so simple and i love this and thank you so much for sharing it once again comment on our youtube uh you can see down below if you want to click it um it brings you right to our youtube channel which is awesome you can see what we're saying you can see what we look like you can see our gestures and uh yeah just we're super excited to shout out the next one for this coming week so thank you again for sharing that yeah and for my quote i actually pulled out of my reading this morning so i Went in there and changed it but i've been reading jacko willings he has like a field manual it's kind of like a rant of his like diary i guess and we'll talk about nutrition training mindset different components which is really cool and 
I, in Florida in particular, I established an amazing habit of reading like 10 to 20 pages first thing in the morning. And I'm doing this book challenge, so I need to be on my books. There's a lot of books to read, so I'm aiming to do 52 books in a year, which is definitely no joke. So it's a, a good effort, a lot of reading. And one thing I've been liking is putting some of that time, because when you can just put it at the start of the day, it's very, very common to like pass something up when it's later in the day. If I'm like, oh, I should read tonight. A million things are gonna pop up. Someone's gonna ask me to do something. I'm not gonna do it. Whereas that morning is that static time I can be on it. And that's why like a lot of people will make fun of all the amazing habits people will do in the morning or influencers will say, do this, this, and this. Like even my morning, someone said, well, that sounds great. But uh, if you have this and this, you'll never be able to do it. But the truth is that is what I do every morning because I can allocate that hour and a half. I know that's my time. I get up a little bit earlier. I have that time for sure and it feels great. And that's why I like to put things that are most important that I know I need to get done in that time. And I'm gonna talk about this a little bit later, but reading those 10 pages has been amazing. And especially when it's something motivational and inspirational like this, it gets my mind going, makes me avoid excuses. And that's what brought me in today's quote. So that's a habit you can add if you wanna read more, especially if you wanna read more nonfiction, this is a great way to go after it. And it's definitely a fun way to incrementally get some of it in your day. But the quote I pulled from his book is that discipline begets discipline, will propagates more will. And it's pretty straightforward and obvious, but if that doesn't fire you up, I don't know what will. And going into, I guess, the thought portion where I was headed anyways, he also mentioned how you can have two paths for a day because in the past we mentioned how we believe willpower is like a cup that gets drained throughout the day as you get later. And I definitely do believe that's true, but he said he doesn't believe that and he feels more so that when you're on a path, you're more likely to finish that path. And I thought this was a very interesting mindset as well. So his example was if for instance in breakfast, you say I'm gonna have a donut for breakfast. I'm just gonna start with that. Lunch comes around and instead of your healthy lunchy pack, you go, eh, I'm gonna have five slices of pizza. Then for dinner, you have something horrible because when you're down that path, you just want to keep following it out. It's very hard to re-steer the car or the train or whatever you want to call it and get back on that good path. Whereas when you start that day, you don't hit snooze, you get up, you go out on a walk, you meditate, you read a little bit of an inspirational book, you eat a healthy breakfast, you go to the gym. It's very easy to stack and have that discipline and do those high level tasks that ultimately make you feel better. Going back to the quote, discipline begets discipline and will propagates more will. And I thought that was a great reminder and that's why it's so important in those first decisions of the day to keep yourself on that good path. And to that point, you get this like high, you get that endorphin rush when you're accomplishing things, you're getting things done. It makes it easier to keep steamrolling that and doing good things. I mentioned before, it's the days you do the least, you have the least focus, you have the least going on, where often you feel the most tired, the most demotivated, and it's just easy to default to things we think will make us feel better. Having that donut, having five slices of pizza, then you feel lethargic, your digestive system's all messed up, you're burnt down, you go to watch TV, you watch five hours because you're feeling demotivated, the day's a wash anyway. Then when you're watching TV, you're like, I've done nothing. I feel uncomfortable. It doesn't actually truly relax you. And you're ultimately going to make yourself feel so much worse, be less healthy and be in a more negative situation than when you do those high level tasks. So I think that's a good reminder to think of, am I on the right path for the day? Am I doing those actions that are going to help me naturally have more willpower, have that discipline to promote more discipline and that will to propagate more will? I love that. Honestly, for me personally, when I look at some of the worst days that I've had, I do think that it's usually a lack of a morning routine, a lack of planning. Like when you just get the right morning routine, you do everything you need to do. You're putting your armor on for the day. And even just, I know I've shared this before, how like journaling fell out of my routine, but meditation was one of the things I, I, it makes me feel so great. It's one of the top things for mental health in my personal opinion. And I just, when I got back from Florida, I switched my routine a little bit and I started doing it later, but then I would always put it off because there was always something more important to be doing. I would always have to edit a video. I'm like, oh, I'll spend some time doing that. So even as of this week, I started putting it as soon as I get back from my walk I do my meditation and for me that's what works that's what makes me feel the best that's what does I don't put it off and it's just so important to do what works for your situation spend some time reflecting even just it's so easy to be like oh well I don't have time I, I just I may as well forget about it and for me actually actively sitting down like so what's going on like why is this falling out of my routine and how can I make this change going forward you're going to be a completely different person when you start thinking like this so that was a very great thought and I'm glad Josh brought that up and so just the one thing that was on the top of my head past that for this week was I feel like a lot of times some people need um, something to inspire them that isn't so great. So what I mean by this is a fatal accident, maybe really bad health um, to just 
realize that they need to make some changes. And I'll give you an example. One of my friends did get into an accident and I asked him what, and he's totally okay. I asked him what he realized and what he learned from that. And he had a lot of realizations as he was just like, oh, life is so short, like all these other things. And I relate this to the fitness journey a lot because I find so often people need an accident or a bad checkup from a doctor or someone to say, hey, you have diabetes or you're overweight and you need to make this change. And for me personally, I've always had the belief that you need to make these changes before it's too late. And even similar to injuries in the gym, there's so many people who will wait to start doing mobility to start to actually even just do proper strength training and like all this stuff before they actually make that change. And it's just, unfortunately, it's, you know, never great to kind of just wait until something happens like in my personal opinion like and and this is something to challenge you with like what can you do now who can you reach out to what type of exercises can you do to make you stronger so that way when you're 60 you don't have to be like man I'm just I wish I did it earlier even your diet even just actions that you need to take experiences just it's one of the most powerful things and it's going to be something that's going to improve your life in so many different ways and I just want to share this with you today absolutely and it's easy just to wait for these big life altering events or you go to the doctor a perfect example is the dentist i've said it before you go you have three cavities you're like oh i gotta toot my teeth serious i gotta brush longer i gotta stop eating this garbage i need to do all these amazing habits i need to floss but the reactive mindset like that can really mess you up if you wait till you find out you have diabetes you have some horrible situation you're severely overweight and it's so easy to put off that pain and doing those self checkups. And that's why I'm a big believer in weighing in every day. I know exactly where I'm at. I can catch myself. We've been there before. I know a lot of people, they'll sell on about 180. They won't go on a scale. They'll hop on the scale and they'll be 210. And they'll be like, my gosh, what the heck happened? It shocks their world. They get in the gym, they get fired up for three weeks, start to lose the weight. They lose that habit of weighing in. And then the situation completely happens again. So it is always good to remember like, What do I want to do to live my best life going forward? How can I get ahead of these horrible situations? Am I doing those small things I need to do, like brushing my teeth, uh, flossing, all these little different things that are going to prevent me this pain in the future? And that goes perfectly into my final thought, which is the quote, don't just be great in public, be great in private. It's so easy to look at influencers, what they're doing, the crazy lifts they're doing, the really cool meals they're eating. But the truth is it's those small things that make someone great. And those small little methods of greatness are what connect those dots and get you to those amazing positions. So examples are doing those things in the morning that I mentioned, winning those hard battles, being on the right path in the day, having these habits that may be a little bit boring in the moment, but that multiply to incredible things. So don't just look for these big, great acts of heroism when you're at the gym, lifting crazy weights, grunting, being really impressive, or having these crazy meals or what you're posting, but win those small battles when it's just you versus you, those little increments in the day that are ultimately going to make you better. Awesome. And so this, uh, that's all I have. Do you have anything else? That's or? it. Sweet. So we have uh, Brooke as the client shout out for this week. Yeah. So we're shouting out my client Brooke today. It's been awesome. I now have been working with her, I believe just about three years, which is crazy. Like it's been absolutely awesome to see her progress, to see her really put on some amazing muscle. She's wanting to get in the competition circuit in the near future. So definitely look out for that. She's gotten insanely strong and she's been able to navigate being in school, all the challenges, all the different things that pop up in life. And to me, that's what's most important. It's not just about getting fit once, having a good experience one time, almost four years actually, sorry, which is absolutely incredible, but it's about doing it over and over again, doing it through the different phases in life, the different situations, the different struggles, the different challenges that come up. And it's been absolutely awesome to help her put on more muscle and strength. And if you want help and support through different challenges, situations with summer coming up, this is your chance. We do have the summer challenge special going on. Only three spots. They will go quick, but we're looking for three amazing people who can join us. We have three spots available for this challenge. And we know this challenge is going to be groundbreaking because you're going to get one-on-one coaching. You're going to have the challenge criteria. You have the prizes. You have the motivation of summer. There is no better time to get started. So to get started, you can either apply on our website. The link is in the description down below or DM us on Instagram to at Colossus Fit, C-O-L-O-S-S-U-S-F-I-T, saying summer challenge. Now we're gonna jump into your mail questions because this is Motivation Monday, previously Mailbox Monday, and we're gonna kick it off with number one, which is, I hope you are doing well. One thing that hooked me in your podcast is hearing most of all happy. So in the intro, we always like to say fit, healthy, and most of all happy podcast because, and a little bit of a backstory, I'm really glad this was mentioned was, we started with Colossus Fitness. That's our business name. That's how things kicked off. We made a YouTube channel. We wanted to be huge. We wanted to be strong. We just want to be monsters. We loved 
hoorah, all that great stuff. And then obviously, as we've done this over 10 years, that's evolved into more. And we've been loving helping people that do want to be huge and be crazy bodybuilders or someone who wants to stack on serious mass to their glutes and shrink their waist, but also help different people who just want to be able to play with their kids, who just want to be a fit mother, a fit father, a fit whatever it is, professional in their life or see the change they've never been able to do. And happiness, I believe a big part of it is when you're in line with your body. A lot of people say mind body and there is a big connection there in our mind. And they say one of the number one things about getting older is that you still feel like you're 20, but your body feels like the age you are. Maybe you're 80 and you just feel like you can't do what you wanted to do. And I actually brought this up to my uh, grandmother, Bocce, I call her Bocce, Ukrainian for grandma. And she said, that's exactly it. And that's exactly how she feels. And she has such a youth in her mind, but sometimes her body can't feel that way. And especially when we're young, something I always say to my friends, like you're in your twenties, you're in your thirties, you're in your forties, even like there's no excuse for you to be feeling like you're 60, 70, 80, cause it's only going to get worse. You got to get ahead of it. And happiness comes from being in line with that from being able to do the things you want to do to not be restricted. I always see people like even yesterday, Saga hit his uh, set of chest press machine, starts grabbing his shoulder. He's doing little shoulder. Like you can tell he's going through a lot of pain. He's like a 20 year old kid. And you're like, Oh, this is a, a tough spot to be in. And like, it's not, judging it's more a situation where it's like we want to get ahead of this we want to be our healthiest self and for us to be happy we need to be living in line with where we want to be with our body with our movement with our habits and you have to ask yourself you're not progressing forward you're probably regressing and things can get a lot worse you want to be that person who's 60 that looks like they're 30 that's doing everything they want to do so don't put this off before it's too late going to my previous talk and that's something i wanted to add on here but Going back to the question, do you have any episodes on mental health that you have done, Amber? So Kyle had a few things. He was going to pop off for this one. Yeah, we've done an interview with Abby Scott like way in the past. And I just, when I was searching our titles, like that's the one episode. We'll link it down below as well. She had some great tips, but we haven't done like a full on episode. And for me personally, I mean, similar to what Josh was saying, like overall mental health, happiness, like it is so important. And I was just looking up some stats and it says somewhere in the world, like anywhere between 50 and 60% of people are happy. And once again, it depends on probably where you are. Like there's a million things to consider, but our biggest mission is like overall like not just fitness but happiness and just great mental health as well in line with physical health but for me so many things and that's what's amazing is I feel like the physical health and mental health go so hand in hand and like when I think of the things that just help me mental health wise it's getting the exercise in releasing the endorphins taking care of myself going on my consistent walks uh having great healthy foods like we all know that our mental health and our just overall happiness is so much better when we're taking care of ourselves when we're doing those things and it's just been a proven fact over and over again i saw randomly the other day there was a, a stat or a post by lane norton and they were saying that french fries lead to depression and he said okay you have to like his first comment was saying that you have to obviously take a look at everything else and like what's taking place but it causes a lot of people to overeat therefore end up being unhealthier and overweight, which causes them to just be depressed, right? And that's something that I thought was very powerful because you don't really look at these things. Once again, if you don't just have French, if you have French fries, that doesn't just mean you're gonna be unhappy, but it's the overall fact of not taking care of yourself, of just being an unhealthy body weight, of not feeling your best, of not having energy. So. I really think just taking care of yourself is so, so, so important. And my other second biggest thing is just doing stuff with purpose. And I feel like so many people don't have this in their life. And for me personally, I feel fulfilled very often, even just popping on this podcast today, getting some content. I was editing, you know, a push up video and I was just posting reels, posting all these other things. And for you, this may not be in line with what you're doing job wise, but I think the biggest thing you can do is get creative and do things outside of your job if that's not something you can kind of do. But once again, having a purpose, being able to be creative, do things that you actually enjoy, having fun with it on top of taking care of yourself. Those are the two things day to day that for me help the best. I'm not going to speak of all these things that like other people will say that don't help me because I can't really speak to that. And I just don't want to give you tips that I've never applied, but those are some of my biggest things for sure. Absolutely. And I think there's a lot of experts on the mental health space that are definitely worth referring to. Like if you want to explore avenues like therapy or seeking out someone who is an expert in that field, that's absolutely awesome. But in my opinion, one of the best things you can do is actually just be living a life that's in line with what you want. If you look at your life and going on to what I said before, you're not doing a lot of things you want. You're not embracing challenge. You're not 
able to do any of that, it's really easy to be discouraged. And if you're spending a lot of time doom scrolling, as they like to call it, and you're just looking at all the things you're not, all the things you want to be, and you're just constantly putting yourself down with it, I find there's nothing positive that comes from that. You need to do something to break that cycle. So unfollow those people, get off social media a bit more, spend some more time working on yourself, being more empathetic and understanding with yourself goes a long way too. But when you're doing these things, it's hard not to be like happy and to be at a better place because you're taking control. You're not a victim in that situation and there's so many different layers to this and there's so many different situations and unique uh, components of each individual's journey but I find one of the best things you can do is like get really good sleep take care of yourself be patient with yourself have a great friend group and network and definitely be working on some form of your fitness taking advantage of being in sunlight going out on walks eating really good food all those things are going to give you an incredible advantage especially too if you do have more of a predisposition like there's a lot of evidence that some of uh, genetics can play a role in depression and how depressed you can feel and like that's a whole different story that's a whole different ball game and there's a lot of things that can be ironed out with that but i find at least the best we can do is all we can do in that situation and that's starting to do these things and i think all of us have a component of our life that we're like, I could be a little bit better here and it's something I'm gonna to work towards and something I can improve. And that's why I love being there to help coach people and see them be feeling like they're in the best spot ever because like I said, they have that alignment between their mind and body. They feel like they're making that progress. They feel good. They're getting that vigor, their energy, their focus back and having something that you work on a directive it really goes a long way and i find too it's hard to feel really sad or be in your head when you're busy when you're doing things when you got stuff going on like when you're just getting after it you just you get so consumed by a task and some for some people they can go too bad and then get too deep into things but for most people i find this is a good solution to feel really good about something so those are my top tips one thing I was thinking of, as Josh was mentioning that, is the people around you, the influences will make such a difference. Even this morning, thinking of my my morning between reading a book, listening to a great person with positive motivation and tips and stuff, the videos that I watch, the audiobook or podcast that I listen to while seeing Josh, you know, obviously having some great dogs helps too, you know, just brings up the happiness levels there. Uh, personally speaking, even just once I meet up with Josh, you know, positivity, let's crush this workout. Like there's a lot of people that don't have that. And, you know, maybe sometimes when you go into an office, you don't have that. Even your friend group might bring you down. Like the difference between that morning that I listed and then like turning on the TV, seeing everything that's bad in life and then just the interactions that you have, like it's such a big difference in my personal opinion of how that can make you feel, how that can affect your mental health. And it's so important. Like I find even like Josh was saying, like getting around those people and even our coaching having someone actually care about you, take care of you one-on-one, -on -one, going in the Facebook group, seeing everyone sharing these different things. Like if you don't have those influences in your life, like I'd say, first of all, find it. There's videos, there's books, there's podcasts. And then even just joining us, having someone say, Hey, you got this, like we, we can make this work. And us giving you different tips based off of your situation to help you in your journey progress. Like that alone will go such a long way. So the positive influences, in my opinion, can change so much. Even just a friend who says, Hey, like, keep your head up. Like you got this. And, and being there to support you versus the one friend who drains your energy, that'll make a huge difference. And I just want to share that today. Question number two, curious if you have any tips on how to tone my arms. I'm making really good progress with toning my belly and fat elsewhere, but can't seem to get the arm fat to go down. So this is an amazing question because I know this can be a really tough area. And for a lot of people to have like that little bit of jiggle and a good way of kind of knowing if it's fat or not, like even for me, like when I have my arm strength flex and you can see it's not jiggling too much. So we don't have too much fat there. If you go back to the great philosopher Arnold Schwarzenegger, he says if it's jiggles, it's it's fat and that's a good way to kind of be aware of that and it can be a tricky area and some people can have a predisposition to store more fat in their arms some people will have none and they'll store it all in their stomach it's really unique where and how we store fat one of the healthiest and most common places to store it is in your legs and glutes it's kind of where you want it you definitely don't want visceral fat but some people too will get a little bit more in their arms they get a little bit more spread over and it can be unique to the person and one of the easiest ways to circumvent that is just to keep leaning out to keep on the plan because sometimes like belly fat will go first for someone and arms last for someone else and sometimes it can be the complete opposite their arms will get super lean before their belly and everyone is just so unique in this sense 
So that's my first tip. My second tip is to do some specific work on that area. Maybe you're not doing a lot of tricep work, you're not doing a lot of bicep work, you're not actively working to replace that with muscle and have strength because I know some people will get worried, especially some females, they're gonna have super huge arms if they start working their triceps. But doing things like push downs amongst other really good exercises will actually help promote and help you have a really slender, strong arm because when you have a lot of muscle there, you're not really gonna get that jiggle and that excess fat. So that is another thing to definitely be mindful of, but those my tips what do you got Kyle yeah so this is obviously I mean if you're making great progress in your stomach area you're losing body fat that tells me that you are in a calorie deficit and you're taking care of your nutrition of course but yeah just a lot of it I know last week I was talking about patience but I'd say that's probably the biggest thing uh, for me personally I lose a lot of it in my upper body first and my stomach and lower you know just uh, lower back area is the most frustrating and the most stubborn and I'll never forget back when I was just trying to get ready for a competition it just it wouldn't go away and I just realized and Josh was sharing some great insights. Just keep going, just keep going, some keep, just keep going. And that's the biggest thing is just our bodies are so unique. Like I know Josh, for example, will just like have shredded abs and then usually his like upper body will catch up afterwards. I'm more so the complete opposite and our bodies are just so unique. And that's the biggest thing, like Josh said, just to keep into consideration. But really that's, that's about it. It's not, you know, rocket science. It's mainly just showing up consistently. You know, you might need a couple extra pounds, but there is just uh, that time where it just kind of comes together and it's like okay cool you know it's working for me but uh yeah that's all i got there and number three this is a bit of a fun one as i was uh you know putting together this episode i'm like you know what there's a bunch of questions i want to just rapid fire put josh on the spot and uh i didn't share any of these with him so he has to think of them quickly so it's going to be super fun there's five, uh, seven questions actually i was going to do five but i'm like there's too many good ones so here we go rapid fire the first one is going to be what is your favorite exercise to do in the gym Oh man, yeah, that's a fun idea. I'll do this for Kyle next week. But my favorite exercise in the gym of all, oh man, I, I don't even know. I like doing so many of them. Like it is really hard to specifically pick one thing like I genuinely look forward to doing. Like I couldn't even really tell you, honestly. Like that's an interesting answer in and of itself. I guess I'll just say compounds in general. Like I enjoy the challenge of bench squat and deadlift and navigating those. Like I, I honestly truly do not have one movement that I'm like, I'm so excited I can finally do this because I've gotten to a point as well where I do them all at a pretty hard threshold and they're all heavy and they're all like a little bit tough. So there's not many where I'm just like, ooh, this is so fun. I can't wait to get into this. So I mean, what would you think is my favorite? That's why I actually put these because I have no idea because I know you like doing really hard stuff and it's like, it's easy to say lateral raises and bicep curls, but like, I mean, those are like easy. So that's why I'm like, kind of like, he likes yeah. the hard stuff but also it's fun to just pump up. Like, I don't know, I'd say bench press. That would be my guess, but I'm, I'm not fully yeah, sure. The bench is just so hard. Like I, yeah. there's a lot I like, but they're hard. So yeah, I'm going to go compounds in general. And unfortunately that's the best I have. I, I really can't narrow in on anything. All right, what's the next one? Next one is the least favorite exercise to do. Least favorite exercise to do would probably be, oh man. That one is easy. That one I can say with confidence is barbell lunges. I hate barbell lunges. They're ridiculously hard. I find them awkward, but they're amazing. I try to do them because of it. Generally, if there's something I really hate and I find hard to do, like I hate split squats, just the same. I try to do more of it. I definitely dislike calisthenic movements probably the most. Like I just have no desire to sit there and do a three minute wall sit or do a hundred push-ups. Like I just find there isn't enough load for it to be challenging that I have to do a million reps and it just fatigues the heck out of me and it gets like almost boring in a way. Like I really like doing heavy weights for five, six, seven, eight reps as opposed to doing like sets of 50. So that's my answer for that one. Beauty. Well, it's going to get easier from here on out. Uh, that was a great answer. And what is your favorite quote of all time that stands out? To how you do it? anything is how you do everything. That one I can answer easily, like quotes and all that great stuff definitely is a little bit less nuanced in the gym. But how you do anything is how you do everything is my number one for sure. Because I just find you can take the mundaneness of life. Like, did you make your bed in the morning? How did you tie up your shoe and just that attitude of I do things well, I do things to the best of my ability. It's going to help me evolve to be the best of my ability. Beauty. And uh, the fourth one, favorite sport to watch? Probably mixed martial arts. I've definitely loved UFC. I don't know when I got into it super, but I, I think it's a lot of fun to watch. Like I love watching the embeddeds if you know what UFC is and you can see the background of people. You can see their uniqueness to them, their skill sets versus someone else. And it's an amazing match seeing the two people get after it. Beauty. And I know it'll be different here, but what's your favorite sport to play? 
Favorite sport to play is probably... All right, we had to pause the podcast while I thought about this because I actually, I love playing a ton of sports. Like I'll do pretty much anything I can. Like any sport to me is just a ton of fun. Like I'm not a big soccer person, but I love to play soccer. I love mountain biking. I love anything like just any sport makes me so happy so it's a really tough one to choose but volleyball is that one sport that time and time again has been my favorite so i'll talk about this with kyle like we grew up playing a lot of hockey i'll play a little bit kyle plays a little bit more but every time i play hockey i find someone tries to fight me or something or someone's hacking in my legs trying to like put me in a wheelchair and people are trying to live out their dreams of being in the nhl making fun of each other talking smack like and it just this hyper aggressive thing where you like just ultimately it's hard just to feel good and just go out and enjoy it for what it is is exercise so that's why there's some sports that you find to go away from a little bit whereas volleyball when you're out there everyone's so supportive you're all high-fiving after every good play after every bad play you're in the sun you're in the fresh air beach volleyball in particular and there's a lot of challenge there's a lot of teamwork to it there's a lot of individual aspects and strengths you're diving it's a really low impact it's just to me it's just the total sport like i think if i could just only play one sport for the rest of my life it would be beach volleyball so that one's easy hands down we literally played it every day for hours when we were in florida and that reminds me just before i get sidetracked is that uh, another great thing that Josh mentioned was doing more stuff that makes you feel good. Going back to that first question of mental health, like if you just do things that make you feel good and take note of that, that's one of the easiest ways. I think a lot of times day to day, we do things that don't make us feel good and make us feel poorly and wonder, man, what's going on? But uh, that's just one sidetrack that I wanted to mention. Uh, and number, uh, not number, but I guess the sixth one is what is the most challenging part about being a father? That one's easy. So for that one, normally when you live, you live for yourself, whatever. Living for someone else is a huge variable and you don't necessarily get to do what you want to do at any given point. So there's definitely a big component of sacrifice. For instance, I have like a morning I'd like to do or something and then something pops up. That obviously becomes your priority. And there's someone like even Kyle always say it's amazing how helpless a baby is like if you just left the baby there it wouldn't know what to do it couldn't navigate anything it's not like a puppy where it can kind of figure it out like it really is a vulnerable little thing so with that like if something pops up you can really have to alternate and make different changes or maybe you want to eat your food but you're holding kid and kids trying to grab all your food and throw it everywhere like there's just a lot of sacrifice to it and you don't necessarily just get to do exactly what you want to do, how you want to do it. You got to get creative, find solutions, but having all the skills that come from fitness, health and happiness and working on self-development apply very, very nicely to that, which was awesome. And I made a YouTube video for advice for new fathers that I think would be applicable. So if you want to check that out, we'll link that down below as well. Beautiful. That was a great answer. And the last one is just going to be the, your least favorite excuse, time, whatever it is, just the thing that kind of bothers you a little bit that you just don't love hearing. I think just talkers, I'd say, someone who isn't a doer. I, I can't stand when people just say, I'm going to do this, man. One day I can't wait to get this going once these things come in line. And Kevin Hart has a, a motivational Monday I watch every, or video, sorry, a motivational video I watch every Monday. And he just says how he hates talkers and how you should just be a doer. And if you say something, you're going to go do it. Like, let your yes be yes, your no be no. Like, there's just no power. And like, I know people that for years have been like, I'm going to get in shape. Don't worry. I'm going to be, I'm going to do this. I'm going to start a podcast. I'm going to be YouTube. And like, there's no problem with saying of your aspirations, things you want to do. But like, you got to ask yourself, are you actually doing things? Are you just talking about it forever? Like you, there's no result without action. Like otherwise just a wish, it's a dream, it's a hope. So that's probably my least favorite excuse. And it's just so easy to do ha, be that talker and say, yeah, I know I'll eventually get to my card or I'll eventually I'll start training hard or eventually I'll start tracking my macros. Like do it now. There's no reason to put it off. You don't have to do it perfectly and you might not get it exactly right. Or you might have to dilute that quality a little bit. Like maybe instead of going and lifting for 90 minutes, you go to the gym three times for 45. That's a start you're doing. And then you can evolve and have that snowball more positively and you can advance from that. Awesome. Well, that was a lot of fun. There's some things I knew, some things I didn't, uh, but hopefully you enjoyed that. Once again, we are looking to take on three people who are looking to take their fitness journey to the next level, be around positive people. It's going to be insane. There's going to be live streams, going to be daily challenges, weekly challenges. We're already getting kickstarted. We began today and uh, we're excited to help three more of you awesome people. Send us a message with the keyword summer challenge to our Instagram at Colossus Fit, C-O-L-O-S-S-U-S-F-I-T. And thank you so much for tuning in. If you made it this far, you're the real MVP. Comment down below on our YouTube channel saying what's up and uh, we'll know that you made it this far and you're the real MVP. So thank you so much and we'll see you in the next one. Cheers.